Karibu, 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 Karibu. This is Kenya Diaspora Media with your host Esther from Leicester. Karibu. Welcome to the Spices of Life. From where I am, it is evening, so Karibu, 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 and start sharing. Uh, let your friends know that we are live and let me also share because I want as many friends to join in so that we can be able to go ahead with the spices of life today. I don't know how your day has been, but mine has been a fantastic day. So Karibu Sana, Karibu, welcome and please share with your friends so that uh, we can be able to get something. We can be able to, yes, absorb some knowledge together. So Karibu, Karibu Sana, Karibu Sana and uh, let me advise you or encourage you that um it's good to share it's good to share they say <laughs> sharing is caring so go ahead and share to as many people as you can and let them know that esther from leicester is live on facebook esther from leicester is live on facebook and let me share a link also on my wall for my friends to be able to also follow through and hopefully it will work that way Karibuni sana, karibuni sana, karibuni sana. Please share, tell your friends. Yes, uh, it's important that we meet on a Saturday evening and discuss a few topics. Some of them are not so easy, but some of them are so easy. So what we're going to do is kind of <laughs> go ahead and be able to discuss uh, these issues and at the same time uh, be able to grow and develop together karibu sana karibu sana keep on sharing and then we will get started straight away we will get started so kenya diaspora media with your host esther nduta i say esther from leicester and the program is spices of life so i'm gonna give us two minutes so that we can be able to share thank you so much purity matu you have joined me karibu sana jack bay you're watching karibu sana keep on sharing sharing is caring and it will be very important that uh once we learn together let me just share to a few friends and hopefully they will be able to join us and we get to discuss this together because we grow together we grow together once we are able to discuss these issues so keep on sharing you can copy the link to share or you can share to some friends via WhatsApp, via a Messenger, <laughs> via uh, however you do the sharing. And remember to download our Kenya Diaspora Media app so that you can be able to get 100% of all that we do at the Kenya Diaspora Media. When you go to Google Play or to Apple, what you need to do is to download it. It's called Kenya Diaspora Media, Jeremy Damaris. And you can be able to listen to us all the programs that come through you can be able to listen to us like us on the facebook page if you've not followed us on the facebook page please do follow us and may i just know whether you're hearing me yes please if you can hear me loud and clear just let me know that you are able to hear me karibu sana karibu sana muhammad bilal Karibu sana living testimony. Karibu sana Josie. I hope I am loud and clear. I don't want to be talking to the screen, but I want to be talking to live people. So please join in and let me know where you're tuning from. Let me know where you're tuning from and let your friends join in as well. Let your friends join in and Mary Molinka Made is tuned from Gong. And that is in Nairobi, Karibu Sana, Mary, Karibu Sana. Click and share because it's important that we learn these topics. And I like the way the comments are coming through. And even if I don't use my phone today, I can see my comments coming through on this screen. And therefore, I'll be reading them as they come through. But keep on sharing. Keep on sharing and tell your friends. And let me know where you're tuning from. I can see Sarah Mwangi is tuned in as well. Karibu sana. And I'm trusting that you are able to hear me loud and clear. So if one of you could just tell me that I am well sounding loud and clear. Hi from Makongeni Thika. That is Mash VG or Vaji. 
Karibu sana, mash, uh, karibu, karibu. Yeah, today we will be looking at the very topics that I started last time when I was saying we are doing part one and then part two. Last time it was an introductory part of it. And I can see Jemai Madirango or Jemima Madirango is tuned in for, um, from Moranga. Karibu sana, karibu sana. This is a global program and that's why i couldn't even decide on the time i know people watch from saudi arabia i know people watch from the usa where the station is and i am tuning from the uk in as much as i am programmed from the usa and we tune to kenya we tune across the planet <laughs> so karibu sana and david gishia is saying you're tuned from thika Ngoingua, Ngoingua. I think I have said that correctly. And Purity says you are loud and clear. Sante sana Purity. It's important that I know that I am heard. Uh, it's important that I know that we can understand each other. It's important that I know that I can get to you. So Magi Gadungu, Karibu sana. You said we can hear you very well from Germany. Uh, Sante sana Magi, my neighbor from Another city in Kenya, Eldoret, Karibu sana, even in Europe, you're my neighbor now. And Maggie Kiari says you're loud and clear and you're tuned from MA, Massachusetts. I'm guessing MA is Massachusetts and I guess I'm saying it correctly. I'll be learning these uh, letters. Yes, and Maggie Njoroge says, hello, Esther, you are loud and clear. As we get started, I think it's around uh, 18.32 where I am. That is 6.32 where I am. I know in the U.S. Central Time, it's around a half 12. And I know in Kenya, it's around 9 uh, p.m., a half past 9 p.m. Kwa hivyo hamjalala. Na kama hamjalala, wacha Esther awe ndiyo mwenye wakukulala by. Usilale kabla ujesikia message. But I will be lullabying you at the end of the program. Ndiyo kilala utamuka. Yeah. Na mafikira mema, na roho yako itakuwe mefra here kabisa. So, I'm going to get started. And in between, I'll be reading your comments. So, don't stop commenting. Don't stop talking to me. I need to know that you are there and I am here talking to you. So, Njiri Warwadhiya says hi to, says hi to, karibu sana, karibu sana. So, for everybody who has joined in, please share with the your friends and let them know that there is a very good topic good topic and jiri warwadia is tuned in from kenya karibu sana so last time i did introduce to you uh maximizing spiritual potential and this is the second week i can say of maximizing our spiritual potential i feel in my heart deep in my heart that this topic is important and i speak from my own experience because when i became a christian i don't think i knew much what it is to be a christian my faith was very superficial and when it was so superficial sometimes not by choice but it's because i didn't quite understand myself and i didn't quite understand the faith i didn't understand who god was i didn't understand who the church were i didn't understand the fellowship that i was among i didn't understand people and I did try to study psychology as well to be able to understand why people behave the way they behave and why do I behave the way I behave. That has taken a long time, but uh, the way I'm finding it, I'm finding the answers right where I had left them in the Bible. So I've tried really sometimes to escape from using the Bible as such, but it's like the Spirit of God is telling me, Esther, this is the time that you need to speak about the freedom that you got by understanding what the word of God has done. Because what I've discovered in this life is that the self-help books that we read, a lot of them have borrowed from the Bible. The laws of the country, particularly the UK where I am, they, follow, they have borrowed ideas from the Bible. Europe has borrowed ideas from the Bible. And through colonization of Africa and colonization of the world, those laws and those morals have been spread out but sometimes people don't want to admit that those come from the bible and i can see maggie jeroge say maximizing spiritual potential nice topic yes it is a nice topic because i want us to be fully maximized knowing the power that we have through the power of the holy spirit and therefore maximizing that potential becoming fully aware of who we are and then 
having a life that is abundant. That's what John 10, 10 tells me that I will be having life in abundance. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. And we know there are so many things that take our attentions to kill and destroy <laughs> and to steal. But I know God wants us to have an abundant life through Jesus Christ. And it is Jesus Christ that I believe that brings that freedom. He said, I've come to set the captives free anyway. That's what he said. So encourage other people to join in and we can discuss together slowly but surely. And I want us also to be able to be sharing our experiences. Yeah, Akisha Joseph says, hi Esther. And Akisha, I am saying hi to you. And John Waitaka Damari says, the Bible never fails. The Bible never fails. I've tried to go this side and that side. I've tried sociology. I've tried, like I said, psychology. I've tried self-help books. I've tried philosophy. Even this morning I was in a philosophy class and listening to those people who are in that class, most of them are seeking after the meaning of life and most of them didn't know where to start from. Yes, the teacher asked us, uh, what pilots your life? What pilots your life? And people came with all sorts of, some of them were say diverse things and they would say the values that I was taught by my parents, the law that I'm taught by the government, and none of them were really coming towards God. And I said, we have to have a basis. And that's why my belief in God is what kind of stirs me or steers me and stirs my heart so that I am excited about life. And yes, I feel excited about life because I know there is freedom in God. There is freedom in God. So, <laughs> Karibu sana. And Sarah Mwangi, you're tuned in from Canada loud and clear and Duta. That's what you're saying. And Magi Gadongo said, Amen and Amen. So last week, that was my week one, I said, we were doing a very contemplative topic, very reflective. We have to think about it. It's very practical. And I wasn't shy to say that. Wahubiri wametuhubiri ya mambo mengi sana. The preachers have done their part. The motivational speakers have done their part. Now it's time for us to arise and shine. It's time for us to wake up and put into practice those things that we've been taught in the churches, those things that we've been taught on different types of platforms. Let's not just be hearers, but let us be doers of the word. And then think about it be reflective about it this philosophy class had an opportunity to make us do those mindfulness kind of meditation but when they were doing all this meditation i knew i can speak to god i don't have to blank my mind and think of nothingness i don't have to blank my mind and think of the sea because i can fill my mind with the promises of god i can fill my mind with the greatness of god i can fill my mind with the amazing promises that God has given me so I can affirm my life because of God. So I don't have to clear my mind. And if I try to clear my mind, it's not possible at all, at all. But I will try to understand other people's perspective. And that's why I joined that class, just to be able to find that. So Karibu Sana. And uh, I'm saying well done for choosing to listen to Esther and this topic, however hard it could be. <laughs> Yeah, Karibu Sana Trisa Minor. Yes, we'll be going through these topics together. And it's important, like I've said, to understand our spiritual potential and then how to maximize it. And this is a great way to make a difference in our personal lives as well as the lives of those people around us. It's important that once we know who we are and the potential in us, it's not for us to keep it. It's for us to share out with other people. So, yeah, understanding our spiritual potential and maximize it can be approached from different angles, different topics. And the topic or the angle that I'm going to use, like I said, is the biblical perspective. And I do this for those who are coming into Christianity and those who have matured in Christianity and for those who are teachers in Christianity. I'm not an expert. I am in the learning process as well. But there is one command that Jesus gave us. Go and make disciples of me. I'm not making disciples of Esther at all, at all. 
I'm going to make disciples of Jesus. So we have a yardstick. We have a measuring tool. When we are assessing ourselves, when we are examining ourselves, we can have the mirror of Jesus. We can look into the mirror of Jesus and be able to see him as the standard to which we can emulate and therefore be able to grow even better and brighter. Right. So in this particular class that I was, <laughs> I was, we were asked rather in a group, we were asked if, for example, you were just about to leave your house and then you spilled tea on your best blouse or best shirt. How would you react? How would you behave? And they were kind of looking at what would a wise person do? Because philosophy is about studying wisdom. So what would a wise person do? Would they pull their hairs? Would they shout? Would they tear off the shirt? Would they scream at the people around? Would they scream at the cup of tea or coffee? Would they break the cup? These are some of the reactions we normally do have in real life. Not only when we spill a cup of tea, but when we think someone has annoyed us. And I know I am a victim of those. Not really, not I'm a victim. I am a guilty. I'm not a victim. I am a guilty person when it comes to reacting. So if someone annoys me, remember in my testimony, you are saying, I got annoyed, I got annoyed. I am the type of person who used to really react badly and then I would respond immediately. But as I'm growing mature and as I'm asking myself, what would Jesus do in this kind of situation? I remember mercy. I remember compassion. I remember grace. So I remember that when I was sinning or when I sin, God doesn't slay me. He doesn't kill me immediately. He gives me grace. So we learn how to use wisdom and the best wisdom. It's not wisdom from Socrates. It's not the best wisdom from all the philosophers that you know. It's not the best wisdom from all the religious leaders but that you know. The wisdom from God is the best wisdom. So you ask yourself in situations, what would you do? Solomon was wise, but remember he was not as wise as God because he ended up with a thousand women. And guess what those women did to him? He ended up worshipping other gods he ended up worshiping idols because he was trying to please those wives so be careful when we have wisdom let that wisdom begin from god and musa kagundama kaveli is watching from naivasha kenya rose ruraya you're tuned in gladys kitonga you're saying yes sister make disciples of christ and Lucy Miner is saying hello, hello, hello. Karibuni sana. Thank you so much for joining me. I will also be using my mobile phone so that I don't miss out on some people. So karibuni sana, karibuni sana. And keep on sharing because sharing is caring. We need to really be set free from the things that are holding us down. Footholds, strongholds, anything that you know could be holding you back from being a true disciple of Jesus we need to lay those burdens down. Megan Jeroge, thank you so much. You're saying the wisdom that comes from the fear of God. Yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge that we gain out of fearing God, that is the knowledge that sets us free. The wisdom that we live by is the wisdom that we tap from the potential of God. The wisdom with a W that is capital comes from God. James talks about wisdom a lot. So when you have an opportunity, do read uh, James chapter 3. And also the whole book of James. He talks a lot of sense when it comes to seeking wisdom. We need to seek it from God. So I was saying this, understanding your spiritual potential and maximizing it can be approached from different angles. But for this particular platform, Kenya Diaspora Media, we will do it from a Christian perspective. Yes, we can mention the self-help books. We can mention other people that we know or admire, emulate. But the person that we need to learn from about maximizing our potential is God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit as well as the Word of God. Yes. And then the aim is to give you a broad introduction to knowledge that can be applied. We call it applicable knowledge. Yeah. And like I said, for example, Meginjoroge and the others normally do preach. Yes, we have received teachings from Mama Winnie. We have received all those teachings from Pastor Kahoi. We have received all those preachings from, yeah, all the people who talk to us, 
we do receive those teachings but then we do need now to put this knowledge into practice like i said it leads to living a more fulfilled and abundant life so karibu sana and keep on sharing because we want people to be able to share some of this knowledge with everyone so that we can be set free together and their objective or the intention is to realistically right maximize up our potential that is spiritually once this spirit is set free the word of god said seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these other righteousness will be added and all these other things sorry seek the kingdom of god first and all the righteousness within there and then all these other things will be added to you and that's why my framework starts with s at the top with spiritual and then it goes to the physical and then it goes to the intellect then it goes to the businesses of life which i call the commercial then it goes to the emotions and then it goes to the social aspects of life i think i've forgotten the intellect so it is social that comes towards the last because that's how we build the fellowship so spiritual physical intellectual commercial emotion and social aspects of life that's what spices stand for now in week one i did introduce the aim of this is just what to introduce you to spiritual potential and starting with self-awareness i remember last week i stopped at self-awareness i had talked a lot about uh, the identity and one of the questions i had asked last week is who are you who am i so i don't know whether people have done their homework i hope they have i did say take five minutes and try to write down who are you within five minutes and then show me or rather share with your family the identities that you have come with yes so we start by defining who we are in the physical sense in the spiritual sense however you kind of define yourself you give yourself the identity try and then you can also challenge your families to try to say who they are within five minutes and see how many identities they can say they have remember identity they say it's not fixed identity can be changed or it is it is changeable depending on the circumstances that you are in or rather where you are like i said a mom yeah relating with the children <laughs> a dad relating with the children is a dad and a mom and then when it comes to sisters brothers when it comes to the jobs that you do when it comes to the names that you are called by all those can be able to identify us so <laughs> we started by reflecting about the identity and we try to identify ourselves like answering the question who am i and if you would like to try even today just give me one of the identities we can identify you with let's see how do we identify ourselves so you can use the chat box there to keep the communication going and later on like i said you can always ask other people how they identify you it can go as deeper as the character you know we are afraid to be told oh we are mtu wa sana oh we are mtu mkali sana we like to be told oh you're very kind you're very sweet you're very loving but it's important that people identify the good and the bad and in the process of identifying the good and the bad we can be able to grow together we can be able to grow together musa kagunda makaveli is watching from naivasha he had said and maggie said wisdom that comes from god i mean the wisdom that comes from god is the fear of god it's the fear of god so who are you if you could try to answer at least a couple of people can help me to answer who are they yeah so you can define yourself in the physical context or you can define yourself in the spiritual context i don't mind now apart from the definitions that you give yourself sometimes we allow people to define us i don't know who you have allowed to define you god defines us he does give us definition he does give us identities but around the communities where we live yeah sometimes people give us false identities and sometimes they give us true identities so i would also like to know who do you allow to identify you and charles luanga ogato says from nyamira county well stunning karibu sana charles luanga ogato karibu sana karibu sana so the question is who am i and who do you allow to define you 
And we looked at the physical kind of things that we look at when we are defining people. So people will be saying, Esther looks like this, yeah? Esther, yeah, you can be defined by the facial features. You can define me by all other physical features that you see first. You can define me by my clothes. People do that, particularly women. And even men can define other people in the way they define them. The very first thing you see can be used to define a person. But most of the time, it's our faces that can give a definition of who we are. And our definitions can also come from the body image. Uh, it can give us access to services. It can also give us a sense of belonging, for example, a culture. The moment I say my name is Esther, somebody would guess maybe she's a Christian. That's why she has a name from the Bible. The moment I say I'm Duta, somebody will be trying to find out where does Duta come from. They can classify me with the Kikuyus. You see, it gives me a sense of belonging to a culture, to a tribe. And there's nothing wrong with that because our cultures, our roots are important. But how much value we put in them, that is what really matters. Do we worship our cultures or do we let just grow in those cultures and they add value to our life? Our identities can also help us to develop our sense of well-being and how important we feel about those identities. And then we kept going on last week and we were saying now about the spiritual identities. And I like this, what Mary is saying. I am a child of God, a daughter, a wife, a mother, and a child care professional. Yes, she's an educator. I'm beautiful. I am adventurous. I, am lo I, I, I love living life to its fullness. I know that God loves me. I like that. Mary knows who she is. Yeah, and she has identified herself and she can live out these identities. And it's wonderful to live out these identities. Now I'm moving on to the most important part of the identity. Please share with your friends and don't go away because this is the most important part of it. I wouldn't like anybody to miss this particular part. When I think of spiritual identity, and I said last week, I can never think away from God because I must have a base. This spirit person in me must have come from another spirit, another bigger spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of God. And John 4 verse 24 said, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and truth. So I can never think away from God when I'm thinking about spiritual identities. And I'm doing a quick recap because of those people who were not there maybe last week. The book of Genesis starts very well and says we are created with an image of God. We are created in God's own image. And one of the images, we may not see it, the spiritual aspect of it, but we know the spirit exists. We know because there is that person you talk to in your head. We know because when somebody dies, the spirit leaves them. So we know that part of the character of God, the potential of being a spirit has been extended to us as a spirit person. And when we die, our spirit person goes to meet the bigger spirit that is God. So we are God's handiwork created in Jesus Christ to do the good works that God prepared in advance. And that can be found in Ephesians 2.10. And we cannot, like I've said, define ourselves away from God. If you define yourself away from God, then you need to tell me what you're defining yourselves from. Because I don't, I would really, really like to understand. Magin Joroge Asante Sana, John 4, 24. Thank you so much. And Dorcas Songo is watching from Kisi, Kenya. Asante Sana, my friend, Karibu Sana. And then Joan Karori says, hey, hello, Esther, and all the KGM fans. Mume Salimi was Sana, na Joan Karori. Karibu Sana, Karibu Sana. So we did identify, and I say the best way to tap into the potential of God is thinking of God as omnipotent. He's all-powerful. If he's all-powerful, then we as his children, we as his creation that he has created in his own image, then we can be able to tap from that potential. We can be able to get some power, but we need to be plugged in. In the same way, when my phone loses power, I'm able to... Plug it in in the power because there is a source of power somewhere. You and I as well do need to tap or rather to plug in into the God's potential, the all-powerful, omnipotent God. He's the one who can give you the power to be. 
And I said, he is all knowing as well. He is all knowing. So he is the one who can give your spirit the knowledge to know much more about him. He is the one who can give you the speed of understanding the word of God and understanding the things that are happening in this life. And I said, of course, he's very good, omnibenevolent. He's a very, very, very good God. And therefore, we can be able to tap that goodness. Like the previous verse had said, we were created in, as God's handiwork to do good works. So the good works we do, we don't do those good works to save us because only the grace of God saves us. But once we've been saved, then God gives us grace to be able to continue doing good works. Like I said, I don't know if I've mentioned, if somebody annoys you, do you react or do you remember to have a little bit of grace? Do you remember to have a little bit of compassion? Do you remember that God has graced you when he was angry, he didn't strike you? So things like that, we do good because we've been saved because we've been graced therefore we can be gracious and we can continue doing the good works of god and i did say we have to remember that our spirit is eternal when it goes back to god then we live eternally with god so we must find ways of living right now and the way we do again is by receiving grace by faith we are forgiven and then we start living anew because god graces us to do that I hope the <laughs> the information is flowing and if uh, yeah Megan Jorogi has given us Ephesians 2 10 very well thank you so much and again I was saying let's discuss a little bit about the spiritual identity already we have seen the qualities of God that flow in us and those are just a few qualities we have so many qualities of God when you have time please start uh, study the character of God the names of God and you will be able to see all these things we can be able to tap from God because if he has that character, then we can be able to tap something from his character. And that's why we are becoming disciples through Jesus Christ. We can be able to learn quite a lot from God because he used to say him and God are one and therefore we can be able to learn quite a lot from him. So spiritual identity touches on every aspect of our life. Like I said, once the spirit is set free, it can help all the other aspects of life to be set free. So we finished last week just around where we were saying that the spirit of God that is dwelling in us, that is indwelling in us, helps our spirit to grow. And in the process of our spirit growing, then we can be able to have freedom also in growing other areas. We remember that this body is the temple of God. Romans 12 says that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice that is pleasing to God. Yeah, this temple needs to be taken care of so that the spirit of God that is indwelling us can have a place to live in so that the Holy Spirit can come and find a good, clean temple. Yes, and we've been studying the book of Haggai in our Bible studies. And when they were talking about, oh, you have built paneled homes, you have built nice homes, but you have forgotten the temple of God. I was thinking also, do we really take care of this body as the temple of God? Because if we do not take care of our bodies, then we won't be a temple that has been taken care of. And let me tell you this, if your body is not healthy, you don't think right. Your heart is not right. And the very moment your heart is not right, your mind is not right, then out of your heart, out of your mind, the things that you speak, the things that you think can ruin life. It can ruin your personal life and it can ruin the life of those around you. Just because maybe you feel like you've added a bit of weight and you're feeling that this weight is a nuisance, it can just affect the whole day. Just because somebody may say, oh, look at you now, Esther. Yeah, I don't know how you look like. They say a bad, okay, a negative comment about you. It can ruin everything. It can ruin what is in your heart. So we do need to take this, to take care of this temple of God and make sure that the spirit that is indwelling it for the time that is indwelling it has a clean place. Let's say, for example, sexual uh, activities, fornication and adultery and all that. You may think it's just a physical act that is done and then it's gone. But those things indwell in our minds and in our emotions. The moment we connect with those people we connect with, we leave our bits 
our part of our emotions in them and they leave part of our okay we leave our part of our emotions in them and that thing can be indwelling in you for a long long time so it kind of defiles your heart it kind of defiles the spirit person inside why it's just a physical act that you did but it doesn't leave your mind it doesn't leave your heart and therefore it defiles Rachel Ray says Karibuni Sana our great fans please keep watching and share and tag and tag and tag thank you thank you so much and we can see Catherine Duta also is joining in and she's also tagging a number of people watching from Dallas Texas Catherine is saying and then I was talking about being defiled we can defile our spirit person from just doing a physical activity so we need to take care of this temple of god keep it clean so that the spirit of god can find a clean place to dwell in so that your spirit as well can be set free so that's where i kind of i stopped last week i know i've added a little bit of the keeping the temple clean just thinking of the bible study we were doing about building paneled home doing external things but not taking care of the person that is in this temple of god so today I want to move on now to the topic of today and I wanted us now to start on the self-awareness, self-awareness. I know there are so many people talking about self-awareness. I know the self-help books try to talk about self-awareness. I know wherever we go now, it's like people are talking about self-awareness. And I wanted to find out what does it mean to be self-aware and I used a dictionary just to find out what it means. And this is what it says. Self-awareness is defined as the conscious knowledge, the conscious knowledge, the knowledge that you are aware, aware, aware of. Conscious knowledge of one's own character and feelings. I have discovered personally, me, <laughs> Esther, most of the things, like I said, I do, I used to react. I didn't consciously think through them. Yeah, you say something, I am there, yeah you kind of don't do something i am reacting i am right there so it's conscious knowledge of your own character and then conscious of the feelings and conscious of the feeling that's where self-awareness is very important that we need to understand that when you look at your character do you think it's pleasing to you do you think it's pleasing to other people do you think it's pleasing to god when you have those feelings whether they are good or bad do you think those feelings are pleasing to you do you think if those feelings are pleasing to other people and do you think those feelings are pleasing to god it's important to be self-aware of how we behave because our behavior shows the character of the person we are it's important to know how we are handling our feelings because those feelings again like i said they can affect what is happening in the physical the things that we see but most of them come from inside. Jesus said, out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it's not the things that go inside that defile a person. It's the things that come out that really defile a person. So self-awareness is just being conscious. It's just about being conscious of the knowledge of one's own character and feelings. But where do we begin with consciousness? I am not going through the Buddha path. I'm not going through the New Age path. I'm not going there. I am going through the biblical perspective. Like I said, my job is to look at the biblical aspect of it. So when I talk about self-awareness, I want you to study through your Bible when you have time. And David Gisha is tuned in. Karibu sana David. And Anne Kamau is also watching from Juja with her family. Karibu sana and kamau karibu karibu ni sana. So when I think of consciousness, what type of consciousness am I thinking of? I'm thinking of the consciousness that God gave me. Being awake, being alive. Are you awake? Are you alive? Are you dead in the spirit or are you alive, resurrected with Jesus? Is your consciousness awake? So I guess you can start at the point where you are right now in life. And you can ask yourself those questions I've just asked by again asking yourself, who am I? Whose am I? Who am I? And who do I belong to? Who defines me? Who guides my life? You can be able to ask your questions like that. 
So we briefly looked previously generally at the definition of who the, we are, like I've said, in the physical. And I have also kind of introduced the spiritual being in a way, but not quite in depth. That's what I want to look at at the moment. But before we move on, let's look at where our identities come from. So I'm going to ask another question now. Where do our identities come from, whether spiritual or physical? Where do those identities come from? Of course, I have mentioned before, so you can use some of the examples that I've used. Or alternatively, you can just tell me, where do our identities come from? Where do they come from? So think about the day you were born. Are you named after your mother's side? Are you named after the father's side? Is it your mom who gave you your name? Is it your dad? Is it the whole community? Please talk to me. Let me know. Who gave you the name? So identity comes from the family. First of all, when you're born, you're given a name. It may be on the day you were born or it could be a few days later. But the first identity we are given comes from the family that is immediate to us. And that remains that way because you don't have the capacity to change that name. We don't have control over that. So when it comes to identities, when we are young, when we are children, Mary, you know, you teach young children, they know they are called this name, but they're not able to change that name. But once you get married, once you're older, then you can be able to change your name. So <laughs> Anne Kamau is saying this, I am a student, Daniel Kamau, this is wife's phone. Fantastic. Thank you so much and say hi. To Daniel he's also my student so I have two students from the previous classes thank you Sana and Kamau and Daniel Kamau Karibuni Sana Karibuni Sana it's a privilege to have you as students and the rest of us as well it's a privilege and an honor to be able to be talking about things these things some of you are well versed with the Bible than I am so I am so happy that we are discussing these things together Asante Nisana Asante Nisana so when you're born you're given a name and you don't have control over that. You accept that name. In Kikuyu, we say, yeah, a name, it's just a name that is given so that it can raise this child to be this child. But to me, I believe that the name has more than just being a name. I am so happy my name is Esther. So when I studied the Bible and I knew my name is Esther, I was so happy. I know I can hold on the scepter of the king, the Lord of Lords. I can hold on to the scepter and say, Lord, grant me this. Just grant me this because I want my people to be free. Yes. And even when I step on this Kenya diaspora media, I pray and I say, Lord, help me. Help me to tell your people the truth because, you know, going to the king of kings and never sure whether it's a calling that you've been given. It's a daring thing like the Esther of the Bible did. I don't know what your name means. So whoever chose your name must have sat carefully and thought about this name that we are going to give this child because this name can define their character. Once they get to know, you remember I said self-awareness is about being conscious of the knowledge, being conscious of the character, being conscious of the feeling, and also being conscious of other things. So once you grow up and you start knowing the meaning, so I'm happy even for the name Duta, because now I know the meaning of that name. Like I said in one of my interviews with Jeremy Damaris, I said, people are saying Duta means go Tuta, being angry. And of course, I used to be an angry person, but it's something I've learned really to come out of that. Now, if you look at Duta now, do you think Duta is an angry person? No. I reversed that gotuta and it became duta a teacher or someone who gets somebody from here to there. Duta ha ha oginye haria. Duta teach me. And I'm glad that is the profession I ended up with. I don't know how exactly it happened, but for one reason, when I was filling in my passport, even before I was qualified as a teacher, yes, I was a lab technician, quality control working in quality control in a lab for a long time. Like I said in my interview, I didn't love that job so much. I wanted to be a teacher. So even in my passport, I filled it in and said I'm a teacher before I was fully qualified. Yes, my name Duta means teach me. It means get me from this position to this position. And that's why I'm trying to get you and I from one spiritual level 
to another spiritual level. Okay, Shekoyemi Mary says this, the meaning of my name Shekoyemi is God loves me. I live by this name. My parents gave me my name. So I don't know about the rest of us. Who gave you the name? Do you love your name? What does your name mean? Do you love your name? Yeah. And what does your name mean? Are you happy to know that you have a name? Yes. Like Magi, does Gadongo mean you're Muzungu? <laughs> I don't know. So I believe any name that you've been given, if you've never tried to find the meaning, go and find out the meaning of your name and find out whether you like it. Now, when you're a child, you don't have control in changing your name. But once you grow up, you can have control of changing your name. You can decide to stick with the name that you were given or alternatively change. One of my sisters changed her names because she didn't like the name she was given. She didn't like it. Now, identity, we get it from the name that we have been given. Your name can have a meaning. It can have a meaning in the physical. It can have a meaning in the spiritual. I was working in Kissy, and I know some of the names I wouldn't have wanted to call my child. Sorry if there are kisses here. For example, the name Nyangau, I wouldn't want to call my child Nyangau because Nyangau is a, a hyena. But it happens because that's the way they name their children anyway. Now, the next thing that can give you an identity or can shape your character, it's something called conditioning. And Shekoyemi Mary can be able to prove to me this one because... She is educating very young children at early years, and this is the time she's teaching them how to identify this, how to identify that, how to do this, and how to do that. But all of us are conditioned. We are conditioned in our early years and in our childhood. We are conditioned by the parents we live in, with, sorry, I mean the parents who raise us or the carers who raise us, as well as the schools that we go to, as well as the environments in which we live. So again, these conditions or conditioning, it's out of our control. We are not able really to say no to the way we are conditioned. Until teenage, early teenage, around 13, that's when you can start being conscious of what you're being taught and you can start deciding that this is right and this is wrong. So scientists call this face of conditioning and conditioning doesn't stop there. If you like certain programs on television, you're being conditioned by those television programs because you're borrowing ideas from them. If you like certain lessons, yeah, I know people who read, again, self-help books, they read and they read and they read. Those topics that they read from the books, they condition them in that way. Sometimes they act upon what they read. Sometimes they don't act upon what they read. But whatever ideas that are going through your mind, whatever activities you're looking at, they do condition us. So this too is beyond the child. If it's a child, they're not able to change that much. But once they have grown up, they can decide that this one I don't like and this one I don't like. So the parents, the guardian and those around us can also give us some form of identity. And I'm saying these physical identities mainly, but they can also work through our spirit because those things that condition us, they affect our spirit. So for example, if a child is taught that sex before marriage is not bad, then they will grow up knowing that sex before marriage is fine. And therefore, when they are teenagers, they will start experimenting, maybe even younger, I don't know. If they are taught maybe stealing is okay, then they can go stealing. If they are taught that helping one another is nice, then they can take up those kind of characters. They can be conditioned to be better people in the society. Okay, and Rose Richardson says, my name is Rosemary. It means a beautiful flower. Thank you so much. That's my mother-in-law on the other side. I always wanted to be a Robata. Uh, would you be able to tell me what Robata means? But I know your husband was Robert, so you didn't lose so much uh, from that angle. So I don't know why you wanted to be called Robert. I don't know the meaning of the name Robata. I mean Robata, so you can always tell me what that one means as we develop or go old oh, i mean grow older and mature yeah it can be either we are growing older or maturing then we can start distinguishing between what is right and what is wrong we can start saying i don't like this value but i like that value you can start seeing the difference between good and evil remember in one of the topics i had spoken about the garden of eden and the tree of good and evil 
to me it's an age where 13 and growing up you can start knowing this is good this is evil i don't want to be called this i don't want this value i don't want to be identified by this because you have started now kind of distinguishing the difference what am i talking about it's self-awareness and one of the places we get our self-awareness is by the names that we've been given by the values that we've been conditioned with by the things that happen around us by the things that we decide to say this is good and this is evil by the things we choose as the things that define us the aspects of our lives that we choose to define us that's what gives us an identity a form of identity but why do we need to be self-aware why do we need to be self-aware remember i said it's a conscious knowledge of our character and of our feelings why do we need to be self-aware what's the purpose what purpose does it serve so research has suggested that when we see ourselves clearly yeah we are more confident yeah when we see ourselves more clearly when we try to understand who we are remember in the previous discussions i talked about self-concept so when we get to know who we are we can become more confident we can build our self-esteem we can start respecting the person we are we can start respecting the people around us and we can become more creative that's what they say we can make sound decisions that is good decisions we can be having a good judgment you know when to be angry and when not to be angry uh, you can have stronger relationships because you understand yourself better so you know how to self-control better remember i've said when a child is given a name they cannot be able to control that when they are growing up as young children uh, they cannot be able to control some aspects of what is happening around them so somebody could be shouting at them but they cannot control that but when you grow maturer when you develop more then you can become more aware and be able to make better decisions you can even build stronger relationships you can choose who to relate with as you even grow older and you're about to get married then you can choose the right partners because you're more self-aware you can also be looking at those characters in other people so we don't just look at the big pocket that man has and they have big money or they have a big car they have a big house or they seem to be having a big career you don't just choose that you go deeper you don't do superficial things you go deeper into the character of this person you go deeper into getting to know who is this person thank you so much shish Leva, levis oli is watching karibu sana for joining us and karibu sana they say when you're self-aware you can also become uh, a good communicator you can communicate more effectively better and they say i don't know how true this is but that's what they say that we are less likely to lie to cheat or to steal now, when I think of those, I'm thinking of the Ten Commandments. So, when we are self-aware, I can say from a biblical point of view, then we can be aware of the Ten Commandments, and then we can be able to keep those Ten Commandments. And Jesus simplified them. They said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and everything that you are. That's what the first three, four commandments talk about, I believe. And then the rest of the commandment, Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself or love the other person as you love yourself and we keep those so we don't lie we don't cheat we don't steal <laughs> so when you're self-aware when you're more self-aware then you don't do these things some have said that we become wiser in other words we seek wisdom and apply it remember earlier as we started the program we talked about wisdom and wisdom the best wisdom comes from god in the book of james he said if you really really want wisdom then seek it seek it from god okay let me move on unless you have any questions i will keep on moving on the notes that i have so that we can be able to learn about this spiritual identity and the spiritual potential that we have remember i'm talking about self-awareness for us to be able to know about our spiritual identity a good starting point is being self-aware and once we know who we are, maybe from the time we were children to the current situation now, and Gladys Minor is listening, Asante Sana, Pastor Samuel is tuned in, Karibu Sana, Asante Sana. When we start knowing who we are, and let me just have a look at some of my friends on this other side. Uh, I have neglected some of my team here. Uh, let me just kind of say 
uh, karibuni karibuni sana wairish karibu sana and karibu sana john john karibu sana karibu and thank you for sharing the link because it means that people can be able to access where we are and we can continue together so what was i saying other people have said that having a self-awareness means that you have a sharp realization of your personality you have kind of you kind of get to know your strengths and you get to know your weaknesses you can know about your thought processes you can know about your beliefs you can know about your emotions you can know about your motivations i know sometimes people don't want to sit down and really reflect about these things about the personality you as a person how do you affect yourself and how do you affect those people around you so we have a sharp realization of our personality including our strengths including our weaknesses and then we know where to apply the strengths and we know what to do with the weaknesses and then we are able to understand our thought processes we are able to understand what we believe in and why we believe in that whatever belief we have then we are able to understand our emotions and then the motivations motivations are the reasons why we do certain things so if i decide to slap my child what has motivated or what has triggered me to do that? Why couldn't I be more self-aware and tell myself that slap is not going to solve the problem? So being more aware, you realize yeah, your strengths. You realize how far you can go in your behavior. You realize what motivates you to do what you do, whether for good or for bad. And then further still, I, uh, like I said, if you're self-aware, it is easier for you. It is easier for you to understand other people and to be able to detect how you perceive them and how you react to them in return. Like I've said, it kind of builds relationships. We become better at relationships. There are more reasons that you can be able to kind of uh, be able to say what is the purpose of self-awareness? Why do we need self-awareness? So the other reasons I can give you, maybe I shall just bullet point them down here. And if someone wants to help me in writing them in the comment box, I'll be very happy. But I'll try to go through them maybe quickly because they are quite a number. So why do we, I mean, what's the purpose of being self-aware? It gives us a reason for life. It gives us a reason for life because our self-awareness makes us seek the meaning of life. Our self-awareness, yeah, if I know I am here, I am alive, then I would like to know the purpose of my life. I would like to know the meaning of my existence. And like I said, I cannot think away from God. I don't know about you personally, I cannot think away from God. So if I want a meaning for my life, I have to go to the creator, the person who sent me out. If you find a watch, I've heard philosophers say, if you find a watch by the seaside, you don't assume that watch just fell from the heavens. And even if it fell from the heavens, who designed it? It must have been designed by a, by a person. And you and I, we've been intricately designed. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So somebody, some power has created us and for the purpose of self-awareness, once I know that, then it gives me the reason for existence. It gives me the reason for the meaning of life. It gives me a reason why I am here today talking to you. Uh, Self-awareness as well gives us a, a good way of personal development, professional development, and any form of development, spiritual development. It gives us also greater confidence, like I'd said earlier, better emotional balance, like I'd said earlier, a better self-control. I don't know about you. If I know what I'm doing, then I'm able to self-control myself better, deeper integrity, it says, and also stronger relationships, like I've already said. And there, there is one guy called Maslow, Abraham Maslow. He used to like using the word self-actualization. So you feel fulfilled. You feel accomplished. If you are self-aware, then you can feel accomplished. And that is if you're self-aware in the good way. Because sometimes people become self-aware and they lose their self-esteem depending on what they find out about their own lives. So if you find that you are uh, constantly, I like the word anger because I was in that category some time back. So if you find yourself, you have uncontrollable anger. So instead of being self-actualized, your self-esteem can go very low because you feel like you don't have control over this thing. It can happen. 
So we need to be able to think in the positive element of life. I am a positive thinker. I like to look at life in a positive way. Yes, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I meet those negative aspects of life, but I would still want to look at life in a positive way. So like I've already said, you get to understand your strengths and weaknesses. Then you're able to explore new things and then you can practice active awareness. So when I go to God to pray, when I go to speak to God, then I can be aware of what God has done for me. I can be aware of the good creation, the beautiful creation God has done. I can be aware of my loving husband. I can be aware of my loving mother-in-law. I can be aware of my daughter loving me. I can be aware of so many things because I'm self-aware. I can also be able to look out on the other things and other people around me and be able to tap as well the goodness that is coming from them. And even if there is some negative aspects coming from them, then I can learn from those. And I can also mirror myself against those and see if there is something I can be able to change in the way I respond to them or in the way I can help them. But first of all, I must help myself because I cannot give what I don't have. So I love them. I show them compassion. But at the same time, if I can be a good mirror for them, yeah, instead of reacting, like I have said many times, then they can be able to learn from me. They can be able to learn from me because I'm practicing active awareness. And then we are not afraid to rely on others. When we are self-aware, I'm not shy to ask for help because we know we cannot do everything. We know we are not perfect. And that's why we need God yeah, and his word. And we need Jesus to look at as a mirror. And we also need other people. We live interdependently in this life. I cannot exist on my own. This platform doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Kenya Diaspora Media. It was opened by Jeremy Damaris, and I'm very thankful for him and his family and for the other Kenya Diaspora Media family because of opening this opportunity for us. Because with this platform, I'm able to reach more people. I'm able to reach his audience. I'm able to work interdependently with other people out of this platform i've made so 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 many friends so i'm so thankful the kamaus gadongo yeah margaret all these people have connected gladys minor yeah josie rich i've connected with them because of this platform so when i'm self-aware because i knew what i wanted to do but I didn't know where to take it. When I took it to them, they opened the door for me. And therefore, I'm able to reach you and you and you and you. Why? Because we are working as part of a team. And this is not the last point, but I'm going to say it because pursuing alignment. Once I am self-aware of who I am and whose I am, then I can be able to pursue alignment with the word of God. I can be able to pursue eternity. I can be able to pursue God by faith. I can be able to pursue love. I can be able to do the things that God wants me to do because I am self-aware. I know who I am and I know whose I am. And therefore, it's easier, so much easier to be aligned with God. Now, not this, not this, not this. All the reasons may seem like they're out there, like they're in the physical context. They may seem like I'm talking about things that happen out there. And we can think that they're determined physically. And we can see they've covered quite a number of areas of spices of life. That is the spiritual, physical, intellectual, uh, commercial, and then emotional and social. They do touch all these areas. But like I said at the beginning of this series, I was going to concentrate on the spiritual person. I've spoken so much, but I want our spirit to be the one that is conquering in all. Because once this spirit has won the game, then the rest of the game, we are on a win-win part of the game. Yeah, so again, like I said, our physical body here is the temple of God. So in as much as I'm talking about the spirit the spirit cannot exist away from the body. Remember that. The spirit is the temple of God. It's the temple of God. So we can't start aside and say, oh, this one, <laughs> the spirit stands alone and then the body stands alone. No, as long as you are breathing, as long as you're in this life, your spirit lives in, the, in this particular body. So note that when we are talking about self-awareness without a starting point, like I said, the starting point of God, 
then our point of reference or our discussion will mean nothing. Whenever you want to know a subject, you do need to know the basis of that subject. Where did it come from and what's the purpose of that subject? So it's important to have a standard. And that's why I keep talking about God. Because without a standard, without a foundation, without a base, I'll be wasting my time here talking about these things that I'm talking about. So self-awareness must be rooted in God. It's just like the way you see a tree out there growing and bearing fruits. It must have come from a seed that was planted in the ground. And you and I are seeds of God. Remember that I have established that we are created in the image of God. And God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, according to that truth. We must do that in John 4.24. I must keep on saying that because it will be pointless at the end of the day for me to talk about self-awareness. And yet, we don't honor God for starting this life in us. For giving us a point of reference where we can know ourselves better. Giving us a mirror to which we can look into our faces and be able to see ourselves. Our characters and our feelings. Where do they come from? God has given us this. And one of the amazing ways to look at this is found in Psalms 139 verses 13 to 16. It says, For you were created in the inner for you created me in the innermost being. That is God. You created me in the innermost being of my mom, and you knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that fully well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. And when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you were there. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So I believe God plans this life for us. So before I was knit very well in my mother's womb, God knew me. And he knew the purposes. And therefore, when I'm becoming self-aware, I must remember who is this person that knitted me so intricately, so beautifully, so wonderful that I am here today to be able also to share the goodness of God that is coming from my own life and that I have learned over time. And if you want to really know about self-awareness, it's not a self-made title and it's not a title that I've just borrowed from, like I said, the self-help books. Have a look. Just go and Google, yeah, self-awareness, Bible verses, and you will see them. The very first time I started hosting these spices of life, I did say self-examination verses of the Bible. It gave me so many of them. By that time, the link that I was looking at had said more than 100 verses on self-examination. The same with self-awareness. If you Google, you will be able to see that there are so many verses in the Bible that gives you self-awareness. So in the next point, we are going to explore the idea of spiritual potential because we've talked about the self-awareness in brief in a way because if i were to talk about it i think i can talk about it the whole day but i've narrowed it up but in the next step we are going to talk about spiritual potential now and how it is married to the idea of self-awareness so umejijua you've known yourself now what potential what capacity do you have that you can be able to maximize so knowing that this is the spirit of esther is not enough knowing that this is the spirit of mary is not enough but what potential does that spirit have what capacity what power does it have so that we can be able to maximize that power and elishipa kiano karibu sana and you're saying oh yes karibu karibu sana so i want to be able to marry the idea of self-awareness to the idea of spiritual potential and therefore be rooted in the omnipotence of God. Remember earlier on I mentioned about God is the omnipotent God. So he has all this power. We need to tap from that power of God. So our spiritual potential may not be obvious. It's not obvious. It's not an obvious thing. Just in the same way our spirit is not an obvious thing. You see Esther in the physical. You don't know what I was eating. You don't know what I'm thinking. You don't know what is in my heart. So our spirit person is not obvious. The same thing with our spiritual potential. It's not obvious. 
but we know it's there yeah we know it's there yeah because our spirit is internal we know each one of us knows that there is a spirit person that is there so from a Christian point of view, our spiritual potential, like I've said and said and said, it's rooted in God, a powerful creator. And our spiritual life simply is the life lived in and with God. Our spiritual life is simply the life that we live in and with God. Just as physical life gives us or begins when we begin with the heartbeat, or with the brain working we know those are some of the parts that are really working in our bodies in the same way we have a physical body there is a parallel of a spirit person we must not ignore that person ukienda kunywa chai patia roho yako chai ya kiroho ukienda kula lunch patia roho yako chakula cha lunch what i'm trying to say in swahili translated in english when you have breakfast to feed your body your physical body feed your spirit person as well when you have lunch Feed your spirit person as well. Because if you know your spirit person, it's going to be weak. That spirit person will be weak and weak and weak. And that's how some of us lose direction because the spirit person dies. They can die of malnutrition. They can die of just neglect. They can die. And that's why in the book of Genesis, it normally says die, die. Indeed, die. It's like you die in the physical and you can also die in the physical. So remember this, that parallel. Now, how can we bring our spirit person alive? Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. And Jesus had a conversation with one guy called Nicodemus. When you have time, go and have a read. Uh, I think it's in the book of John chapter 3, verses 1 to, two, to 21. Yes, John chapter 3. Yes, when you have an opportunity, go and read a conversation that Jesus had with a man called Nicodemus. He was saying, Nicodemus, as religious as he was, a very huge, I mean, big religious leader, he didn't quite understand the workings of God. He didn't quite understand how the spirit works. He didn't quite understand these things. And he sneaked into the night to talk to Jesus because he saw something special and some understanding that Jesus had that he did not have. So that's the time that Jesus told him, you must be born again. And I can tell you, once you're born again for real, if you're born again for real, there's a transformation that happens in life and you know it and you know that the transformation has happened and you have this newness of life and you start looking at life with a different perspective. You start seeing life differently. So if you've not reached that point where you know that you're born, born, born again, then you do need to rethink what is missing in my life. Have I allowed God to be the potential that I'm seeking after, the omnipotent God? the one who has power. Have you sought God enough and surrendered your life to him so that the spirit of God can indwell you to make your spirit grow? Have you neglected feeding the spirit person? Have you left it until it's dead? Has your conscience died to God? If your conscience has died to God, remember when we were talking about self-awareness, we said about consciousness, yeah, being conscious the knowledge has to be awakened kind of a knowledge. And you are aware of the character. You are aware of the feelings. So what do you feel about God? How can your character be reflected through the mirror of God? Anyway, let's move on. So read the story of Nicodemus and how he was told he'll be born again in John chapter 3. And from a personal level, just understand this. You and I are a seed of God. We are planted in this life. And once we are planted in this life, we grow and we bear fruits. And the parables that Jesus gave and many stories in the Bible talk about we being the trees, the trees that bear fruit or the trees that are grafted into Jesus, the branch that does not bear fruit, the branch that is not fruitful. We are the seed of God and therefore he expects us to be fruitful. So the potential, the spiritual potential that you have, first be born again so that you can start living life in the newness. Secondly, become spiritually fruitful. And how do we know? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is this one. And you can read this one in Galatians 5.23. You will have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith and temperance 
you can find different words in different versions of the Bible for those. So read Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And that's only part of it. Being fruitful is one of the potential that we have and we need to maximize that. If you don't know how to love, then you do need to be obedient to God. Start by being obedient to God and loving God with all your heart, soul, mind and everything so that you can tap that type of love that he has and then you can be able to spread to other people. There are other fruitful aspects in the Bible. Please read those as well. And you can be able to find out how to grow. Yeah. Then when it comes to the Christian character, remember again, self-awareness is about our character. Consciously knowing about our character. At the end of the day, we need to have a Christ-like character. When you do whatever you do, do you see Christ in the things that you do? So we need to grow that character of Christ. And please, if you've not studied the character of Jesus, take some time and go study that character of Jesus. And some writers have said when it comes to Christian service, again, this I'm talking about the spiritual potential only in part, and I've touched three parts, an individual level and in the fruitfulness and also in the character. And now I'm looking at the service. Each one of us has been given gifts. And you can study about gifts in Romans 12. You can study about gifts in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe. The book of Corinthians chapter 13. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and chapter 14. Where it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can get to know what spirit, what spiritual gifts that you've been given. And out of these gifts that you've been given, then you can be able to serve one another. You can serve yourself. In the past, I've said your friend number one is God. Your friend number two is yourself. Your friend number three is the other person. So you can be able to serve three, these three persons because God has gifted you in very different ways. For example, when you speak in tongues and when you pray, you're praying for yourself. So you're building yourself up, right? You're building yourself up. But in the process of also going to teach, uh, going to become a prophet, uh, going to give, being generous and all that, you can be able to do service to other people. Now, before I come to the end of today's session, because I don't want to keep you for too long, I want to say this in a nutshell, in summary. Our spiritual potential, we get it from God. And once we get it from God, we are born again. So it gives us the newness of this life. And once it gives us the newness of this life, then it can start helping us to build our character. And when we build our character, then our experience in life becomes much, much better. We live a more fulfilled life. Why? Because God the giver wants us to have a more fulfilled life. So it comes from the inside out. Remember those fruits of the spirit. Remember the fruit of the spirit. If you can be able to cultivate those fruit, those segments of the fruit, then you are more than a conqueror. The Bible says his divine power has given us everything, everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And that is in 2 Peter 1 verse 3. He says his divine power, his potential, his omnipotence has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge, being self-aware, remember? Yeah, consciously self-aware of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So there's the glory of God and the goodness. And this year I'm saying the goodness of God is chasing after us. Are you ready to open up to the goodness of God to choose you? From the beginning, when he created you, he said you are good, very good. So you better now allow the goodness of God to come after you. Equally, when we know the potential that we have in God, then we have a hope. We are no longer scared of dying because we know that we are going home. You know, most of the time when we hear somebody is very sick and very ill, we pray that they don't die. We pray that we don't die. I think we Christians should be even being like, Lord, is this the time you're taking me home? Because now I have labored enough. Yeah, I'm willing to come home because what do we meet on the other side? We meet God, our creator. So we should be wishing to go to heaven. But most of us want to hang around. We just want to hang around. So when it comes to illness, we should be free to say, God, let your will be done. If this person is to leave, let them leave. If this is the time they're going to heaven, let them 
go to heaven joyfully and freely. And that way we set ourselves free because we are setting, surrendering this person into the hands of God. Yes, if we lay our hands or they are prayed upon and they get healed, then there is a reason why God extends their life. So they need to serve that purpose. Again, we go back to how you can maximize your potential that way. If God gives you extra days of your life, then you need to know why God has extended your life. Like we have seen earlier about the purpose of self-awareness, our spiritual potential serves the same, same kind of purposes. For example, we know the existence. We know that we can keep on growing spiritually or personally. We have confidence. We can be more emotionally balanced. We can have stronger relationships. We can understand our strengths and weaknesses. We can be able to find new things and learn about these things. We can be actively aware of our own senses, we can pursue our ally alignment with God. Now, I'm just about to stop today. I'm just about to stop. But I'm going to leave you with a question that I posted on Facebook, which I think people may be scared of answering, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to ask you as you go away and as I go away, what is it that you really, really, really want in this life? what is it what is it that you really really want in this life and then what is it that you really 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 want in the life to come so if you can be able to answer those questions what is that thing that you really really want in this life and then the life after i think added that to the self-awareness and knowing who you are in god i think we can be set free to have that liberty to look forward to a day, that glorious day with God. Whether we live to be a hundred or whether we live to be in our fifties or whether we live to be in our seventies, we can always live in liberty in knowing that we have that freedom in God. In conclusion, we can see that and we can see that whatever happens in the physical can be mirrored in what happens in the spiritual. But I would prefer the spirit person becomes the the mirror image that is mirrored out for others to see yeah so spiritual matters should be the priority because that is the person that will go to eternity this physical body you and i know yeah in a few years time another 20 years time esther will be a bit uh, older and with time you know in another 100 years i won't be here so what will take me to eternity will be my spirit so on top of the question I've given you, what is it that you really, really, really want in this life? And what is it that you really, really, really want after this life? And then try to connect those. For your homework, please reflect on the element discussed tonight or today or at a personal level and then at the societal level. So you as a person, how do you affect your society? And then kind of combine these elements together and... Yeah, you can come with your own ways to maximize the spiritual potential and let me know what you come up with. Now, when it comes to the Maslow's hierarchy of need for those who have ever seen it, you know, they normally say start with the physiological needs. No, 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 no. I would say turn it the other way around. Start by maximizing your potential, being self-actualized, being complete, being fulfilled from the inside out. And then these other things will be added to us. Okay, so if you ever come across Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he says start from the physical, physiological needs. But I'm turning it upside down and I'm saying start with the higher level. Start with setting your spirit free, allowing God to set your spirit free. And then all these things will be added to you. And this verse is found in Matthew 6, 33 that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the righteousness that are there. And then these other things will be added to you. And then also Romans 6, 6 to 7 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by the sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free to sin. So if we die to ourselves, we can become born again afresh in the newness of God. So finally, finally, now I must stop. First, I must know who I am and whose I am. When I know who I am and whose I am, then I will be actually fulfilled. Yeah. And then second, when I know who I am, I can start 
to such ways in which I can be able to build confidence, to build self-esteem, to build relationships. I can be able to go and belong into a community. I can feel safe. Yeah, I don't worry whether death comes or it doesn't come. I'm free. And food and shelter are just additional stuff that God gives us on daily basis, our daily bread. So start with the spiritual daily bread and then all the other things will be added to you. Na kama hakuna maswali, I think <laughs> I will call it a day where you are or I'll call it a night where I am. If you have any question, please, please, please ask. And I'm just going to check again the people who have been communicating with me and then we'll be moving on. So Mary African Girl is watching. Karibu sana. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl, Karibu, Karibu, welcome, welcome, Cheryl, my colleague, one time. Thank you so much for joining in. Pastor Samuel, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hopefully, you've gathered something from this topic. Gladys Minor, thank you so much for also listening tonight, and hopefully, we have all gathered something. Rose Richardson, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for finding even the link to join us. So, thank you so much, Shish Levis. Thank you so much. And Maggie Kathongo, thank you for the support that you give me even outside of this platform. Thank you so much. Shekoyemi Mary, yes, you've been my <laughs> accountability partner in many ways. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Kamau as well, and your husband, Daniel Kamau, you've been very supportive and willing to learn so much from me, and I'm learning so much from you as well. Thank you so much. David Gishia, thank you so much for joining in. And everybody else that has been tagged by Rachel Ray, thank you so much for joining in tonight. Thank you so much, Rachel Ray, yourself for joining in. DTJ Mo, you said welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Catherine Duta. Thank you so much, Magin Joroge, Joan Karuri, Megin Joroge. So we have Magin Joroge, yes, Megin Joroge there, thank you. Dorcas, yes, thank you so much for joining in. You had promised you'll be joining in from all the way from Kisi, Kenya. Charles Luanga, Ogato, Karibu Sana, thank you so much for joining in. Musa Kagunda Makaveli, thank you so much for joining me. Rose Ruraya, thank you. Asante Sana, Gladys Gitonga. Lucy Maina, Asante Sana. Megi Jeroge, once again, Asante Sana. Priscilla Njoki, uh, Lillian, Asante Sana. Teresa Maina, thank you so much for joining in. And Sarah Mwangi, thank you so much for joining in. John Waitaka Damaris, Asante Sana. Akisha Joseph, Karibu Sana, Asante Sana for joining in. And Saliwa Jeremy, oh, I missed that when you joined in. Asante Sana for joining me in this conversation. And then Gladys Wangoi, Asante Sana. Janet, African Arts Wainaina, Asante Sana for joining in. Jiri Warwathia, Asante Sana for joining in. Uh, Maggie Kieri, Asante Sana, Maggie Kathungu again, thank you so much, Purity Mato, by the way, thank you so much for the topic that you uh, suggested that we'll be reading, and we'll be starting from the book of Revelation, so if there is a book that you want us to study, please let me know, but I've already been given a suggestion, and I'm planning to study that together, and you can be able to use that as a mirror to see yourself in it, the book of Revelation, it's a book that people normally say it's a hard book to study but i want to study it with you so purity matu thank you so much for suggesting that and david gishia asante sana jamima dirangu asante sana mashvaji asante sana sara mwangi josie thank you so much even for the education that you're educating me day by day asante sana Mary Molinka Made, Asante Sana, Living Testimony, thank you even muhammad bilal thank you so much jack bay Excuse me, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight. And uh, I can see a few comments here before I leave the station. If you have any question, by the way, or suggestion, please, please, please let me know. And I'm willing to shout out now before I leave the station. Uh, Gladys Mine is saying, very inspiring, great information. Yes, thank you so much. And when Yama Caroline says, great lessons on self-awareness, it's never too late to learn. Yes, it's never too late. And John Karuri says, great show, Esther, very educative. And my nephew, Isaac Ndungu, has just joined in. So what I'm going to do, if you don't have any question, if you have any question, you can post it Yeah, before I leave the station. And I'm so, so, so happy. So, <laughs> we will start 
yes some bible studies as well as uh, looking into the mirror of the word of god and trying to reflect ourselves through that kuna mtu anaswali kuna mtu anaswali <laughs> yeah kuna mtu anaswali and then Isaac is saying nimekuja nikimaliza yes you've just joined us but i'll be saving this video and i will also save it on youtube therefore you can be able to listen to it before i leave the station please uh, download our kenya diaspora media app and it is kenya diaspora media with jeremy damaris as the name and you can download it on google play and on apple as well please like us on facebook uh, subscribe to us on youtube and even on my personal youtube if you find me Esther Duta, you can find me there you'll be able to find other educative clips there sometimes i feel like entertaining <laughs> but i also feel like it's important that i pass this message that god has given me so kuna siku nimekaa hapa chini hivi and i was like nikisema kama tu tukaingia kwa motomo na kana alobo mbaya maybe i'll make people laugh if i do a bit of comedy but <laughs> even if i say oh mommy yeah come and see the ukali it's really peak yeah if I were to do all those sorts of things, I know I can entertain you. But I think I've gone past the stage where I need to entertain you. Maybe in future I'll edu entertain you, but I want to stick to the message that I've been given by God for now. In future, if we have a slot where there is entertainment, we can do that. But for now, these particular spices of life, yes, <laughs> the spices of life... <laughs> There, it's it's hot on some people. It's nasty on some people. There are people who don't like spices in their food, but I have to because I feel it's a mandate that I've been given. So before I entertain you, nikwambie ko kuleko chakula yenyewe na kapilipili kitoko ati ni msuliko tu sana. Before I tell you that, I must tell you that the word of God is powerful. Before we can talk about did you see? Did you see how tiko maratona kicked the pole? Before we do all those accents, I can do them, I can entertain you, but I don't want to entertain you. What I want us to do is to be set free from the inside out. Entertainment and laughter comes much later. So otherwise, asante ni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Great show, I missed you a lot. Na umecheka sana Pastor Samuel na nikaribu sana. So wacha tuonge mambo ambayo ni ya maana kwanza. Alafu hayo mambo mengine yote tutaongeze wow. Let the spirit be free. Let us live in abundance and then all the other things will be added to us. So have a good night. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. Si tutaona neko. Moheto kabete asante sana all the way from Yamumbi. Umechelewa kidogo. Wewe utafanya catch up. Utafanya catch up. Mm, Esther, thanks. Yeah, utafanya catch up. Sawa sawa kabisa. So I want to thank everybody who joined me tonight and if you've been late then you can catch up later on or in the morning in the next day on Facebook or on YouTube. Otherwise, mm -mm. Twitter hiyo siku ya kutosha. Thank you so much everyone. Asante ni sana. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Glad is mine. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You too Isaac. God bless you. Kwaheri ya kuonana alamsiki from where I am. <laughs>